Antibodies, also called immunoglobulins or IgG molecules, are used by the immune system to attack foreign substances called antigens that enter the body. This property can be used to generate antibodies of clinical interest. For example, if an antigen from human cells is injected into a rabbit, the rabbit's immune system will produce specific antibodies against the antigen. The resulting rabbit antibodies can then be withdrawn, purified, and applied to human tissue specimens to identify the location of the antigen within a cell. Antigens are typically proteins or polysaccharides within or on the surface of cells. Antibodies bind specifically to the antigen that triggered the antibody's production, and as a result, immunohistochemical reactions can be very precise. To identify the location of the bound antibody, and thus the location of the antigen, we can use a procedure called the direct method. In this method, the antibody is attached or conjugated to an indicator molecule. Different indicators include fluorescent molecules, biotin, or in this case, the enzyme horseradish peroxidase, or HRP. In the direct method, the purified conjugated antibody is applied to the tissue and allowed to react with the antigen. Unbound antibody is washed away. When HRP is used as an indicator, the hydrogen peroxide substrate is added to the incubation mixture, as well as a third component called diaminobenzidine, or DAB. When coupled to the HRP peroxide reaction, DAB forms an insoluble polymer that sticks to the adjacent tissue. Other chemicals can intensify the color of the reaction product. For example, adding nickel sulfate to the DAB mixture will turn the precipitate purplish black. The location of the precipitating product marks the location of the antigen in the tissue. In this example, the antibody was used to indicate which cells express a particular antigen. When we use antibodies as probes to detect specific molecules, we frequently want to amplify the signal by using a procedure called the indirect method. In this method, an unlabeled antibody, called the primary antibody, is first added. The primary antibody binds directly to the antigen of interest. Excess antibody is then washed away. In this example, the primary antibody is an IgG molecule made in rabbits that recognizes an antigen we will call antigen X. Thus, the antibody is called rabbit anti-X IgG. In the next step, a linking antibody that recognizes rabbit IgG molecules is added to the mixture. In this case, the linking antibody was produced by injecting rabbit immunoglobulins into another species, such as a goat. The linking antibody thus recognizes rabbit IgG Note that after binding to the primary antibody, the linking antibody retains one free antigen binding site. The final step of this example of the indirect method uses a complex that consists of the peroxidase enzyme conjugated to an antibody that recognizes the peroxidase as an antigen. Note how the antibodies in the peroxidase antiperoxidase or PAP complex build on each other. The antibodies in this complex come from the same species as the primary antibody, which is rabbit in this case. Therefore, the free ends of the linking antibodies will bind both to the antigen on the tissue as well as the antibodies in the PAP complex. As in the direct method, antibody is washed away and a substrate is added to localize the reaction. The choice of whether to use the direct or indirect method depends on the purpose of the experiment. The direct method entails fewer steps and is less prone to nonspecific background labeling. However, it requires that the primary antibody be specifically labeled. The indirect method is generally more sensitive and is also more versatile because a variety of primary antibodies made in the same animal species can be used with the same conjugated secondary antibody.